charges can be stored so we can use them when we need to. Recall that when a balloon is rubbed on a sweater, electrons are transferred from the sweater to the balloon. And when the balloon is taken away, it has acquired a negative static charge because it has an excess of electrons. And the sweater, which has lost electrons, has acquired a positive static charge. Positive and negative charges attract each other, so the balloon will be attracted to the sweater. When it touches the sweater again for a while, it will lose its charge and fall down. The balloon could also lose its static charge if it touches a different object, or it can even be carried away by water vapor in the air. So static charges are produced by an action like rubbing, but they are relatively temporary. After the action has stopped, they usually disappear fairly quickly. Here is what we often call a battery. It is more accurately called a chemical cell. It has the same number of negatively charged electrons as positively charged protons. Inside the cell, a chemical reaction takes place. It takes electrons from the end of the cell with a bump on it and pushes them toward the other end. This gives the side with the bump on it a net positive charge and the smooth side a net negative charge. We could also say that the smooth side of the cell has a stored negative charge due to an excess of electrons and the side with the bump has a stored positive charge as a result of having less electrons than protons. Electrons are all negatively charged, so they tend to repel each other. So when the chemical reaction pushes them closer together against the force of repulsion, they tend to store energy. Stored energy can also be called potential energy. It's much like pumping water from a lower container where it has low gravitational potential energy to a higher container where it has higher gravitational potential energy. When electrons are far apart, they don't feel much repulsion from each other, so their electrical potential energy is low. But as they approach each other, they feel more repulsive force, and their electrical potential energy increases. It's much like having a sort of invisible spring between them that is compressed as they move together. A compressed spring has high potential energy. So whenever electrons have been pushed together, they have high electrical potential energy. So we can say that the electrons on the smooth side of the cell possess high electrical potential energy because these negatively charged electrons are being pushed together. And we can say that the electrons on the bumpy side of the cell have low electrical potential energy because the negatively charged electrons are farther apart. So there's a difference in potential energy between the two ends of the cell. This difference in potential energy is known as the voltage of the cell. The voltage of a chemical cell depends on the type of chemical reaction taking place inside the cell. Different types of chemical cells have different voltages, but a common voltage found in many cells is 1.5 volts. Because the smooth end of a cell has an excess of electrons, it has a negative charge. And because the bumpy side of the cell has a deficiency of electrons, it has a positive charge. So when a cell has a bumpy side and a smooth side, the smooth side is always negative, and the side with the bump is always positive.